bone cutter who is a partner at Accenture. Uh, he runs alliances at Accenture. Rocky, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks, thanks. So uh, Rocky and I are going to talk about uh, technology, but before we do, Rocky, I got a, you got a great name, Rocky Bone Cutter. I mean, <laughs> Rockwell Bone Cutter, some people call you the rock, yeah. right? And, uh, but so what's the heritage of the name? What's the background? Well, Ro Rocky Bone Cutter is a good name when you're, when you're 40. It's not a good name when you're a 12-year-old schoolboy. <laughs> yeah. uh, <Okay. laughs> but, uh, but nonetheless, the name, the heritage of the name is actually Hessian. So uh, when uh, King George III uh, went to fight the revolutionaries in, uh, in North America, he actually outsourced a lot of that fighting to German principalities. So uh, my grandfather, seven generations back, his name was Nachenhauer, which is German... Uh, for I think a uh, bone, bone cleaver or, or, or neck chopper or something, right? <laughs> but it comes from a long line of butchers. And so he ended up uh, coming over here, got captured twice. The bone cutters are not a very elusive bunch. Uh, <laughs> and then once the war was over, he uh, just kind of uh, deserted and figured he'd uh, make his hat in Ohio. So he, uh, so we've been in Ohio ever since. Oh, for thanks for sharing that with us. So, so now you were telling me off camera that we, you, 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 you compete, unbeknownst to you, in the uh, the bracketology of names. Yeah, is that right? I, I wish I could give these guys a plug, right? But I found out two weeks ago that I'm in the name of the year contest, which they essentially start out like those, uh, you know, like the college uh, basketball brackets. And I'm a number nine seed in those brackets. I guess the contest started uh, two weeks ago, but you can go online and and vote for Rockwell Bone Cutters. Google so best name brackets me. or something. That is fantastic. Yeah. Well, so we're here at EMC World, you know, and uh, maybe not as, as quite as interesting as that background, but pretty interesting. You know, a lot of business going on here. Yeah. A lot of partnership themes today. Mm -hmm. um, of course, cloud meets big data. That's the big marketing uh, theme of the event. Um, and the first part of that cloud is uh, really evolved from last year's uh, event, uh, EMC World 2010 in Boston, where we heard the journey to the private cloud. Customers really started to hop on that journey this year, and of course, Accenture always, you know, is a company that's been on the hot trends. Whether it was client server, SAP implementations, and and I'm sure cloud is a big theme for your your CIO customers. So I want to talk about that. Mm -hmm. um, talk about what your relationship is with EMC and and how that you know all goes to market. But start with the cloud. What are CIOs telling you about about the cloud? Where are they in that journey? Well, I think that uh, a lot of folks are still kind of asking the question as to what is what is the cloud still, right? I mean, that means a lot of different things to a lot of different folks. Uh, I think that the, the main thing I've seen uh, uh, come up uh, as part of the as part of the, 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 the cloud, both private cloud and external cloud, is just the buying habits of our of our clients. So CIOs, VPs of infrastructure, they want to buy business outcomes now. Uh, and uh, they're a lot less interested in necessarily all of the underlying technology, but they just want it to work, and they want to be able to buy it by the drink. They want to be able to buy capacity uh, as they need it, uh, and um, and that's been the real driver from uh, from a buyer habit perspective. And that's why I think that you know some of the products that uh, that have been introduced recently around VBlock with EMC and Cisco and uh, uh, and VMware's uh, partnership, um, I think that product is going to really uh, going to really be a game changer in that space. To where clients can now uh, not have to necessarily think a lot about the testing, a lot about the integration, a lot about all of the complexity in their environments. Uh, they can you know be able to take this in and kind of turnkey, be able to uh, um, uh, uh, put in uh, solutions that are kind of pre-tested. You know the the VBlack SAP solution, the Exchange solution. These are all products that have been uh, kind of, uh, you know, already put through the the, the, the ringer, and uh, and we're able to provide to our clients from a systems integrator's perspective uh, with a, a lot less uh, uh, drama than what probably we had to do ten years ago, right? So let's talk about some of those business outcomes in more detail. So uh, drama less. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm kidding. I've heard I heard simplified. Mm -hmm. You know, what's the what's the CIO want from that that business outcome that you guys can deliver? Well, I think a lot of things come from that, right? I mean, one, and this terminology kind of gets overused a bit, but from a technology perspective, it, it kind of gives you a single throat to choke, doesn't it? I mean, it enables you to uh, implement a solution uh, that, again, has been pre-tested, pre-defined, pre run through the ringer again. Uh, and uh, if there's an issue or if there's an integration uh, uh, burp, uh, which from time to time is always going to happen, you've got a single uh, group with VBlock that you can go to. Uh, in order to uh, in order to resolve it, in order to get attention to it, and for a systems integrator like Accenture, 
uh, it just makes our job a lot easier, right? We can focus less on the underlying uh, uh, complexity of uh, uh, the interdependent, you know, infrastructure pieces, and uh, really get down to the job of looking at the application and the, the business outcomes of those applications, and focus on that. So, Rocky, in that single throat to choke uh, metaphor, uh, you're the you're the choker. And VCE is the chokey? Well, it can be in right? some cases, right? In some cases, you know, we can be running an environment uh, as an outsourcer that uh, is operating on uh, 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 V-Block technology to where we're that single throat to choke for the client. And in other cases, when the client buys it uh, and implements it, uh, uh, you know, as part of, uh, as part of the coalition, um, then the coalition's a single throat to choke. So, yeah, yeah, both ways. So how are things, how is the, that concept of V block. For those of you who don't know, V block is a single logical block of infrastructure, compute, storage, networking. You put it in, and it services uh, applications across the application portfolio. Um, how is that changing organizations and, and roles within in the organization, or is it? I think it is to a certain extent. I mean, the, the biggest thing that I think that it does is it accelerates the take up of virtualization across the infrastructure. Uh, whether that be virtualization in the storage space, virtualization in the uh, server space. Uh, it enables uh, companies to um, kind of onboard virtualization programs with a lot faster pace than what they've been able to do in the past. And I think that's what's going to be one of the main, uh, 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 one of the key uh, results of the VBlock uh, technology. So talk about virtualization and, and, and VBlock. Talk about virtualizing mission critical or maybe even business critical apps. Let's say SAP and, and Oracle, some Oracle. We've, we're at Wikibon, we've just done a study. We said that the vast, but the preponderance of, of, of Oracle applications specifically by 2015 will be virtualized despite mm -hmm. Oracle's less than sometimes supportive um, <laughs> goal of virtualizing applications with VMware. Mm -hmm. um, of course, Oracle VM, they would love to virtualize those, but. It's not as a robust platform. Our users have told us that you know, time and time again. But despite that, um, the vast majority of applications will be virtualized. But there are those pieces that, that won't be. Where are we today in, the, in that journey? And, and what are the drivers and what are the barriers to that adoption? Well, I think it's actually surprising. I think that the, 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 if you would have asked me five years ago how quickly the uptake of virtualization would be, I would say it would have been a lot further along by now than what it really is. I actually think that there's a lot of organizations that have, you know, kind of virtualization programs that have been underway for two, three, four years, uh, and they probably got really 30 or 40 percent of the value out of it. Um, you know, Accenture's done some research as well in this space, and one of the things that we found is that uh, if you look at the total value that organizations have gotten out of virtualization relative to what the ROI was supposed to be, in most cases, it's not even measured. Uh, and then when you can get underneath the, the underlying data to understand what the cost takeout's been, uh, it gets kind of spotty, but you know, we're showing around 30, 40% uh, recovery of the investment. So a lot of the low hanging fruit for virtualization, I think, uh, was taken up pretty quickly on initial deployment, but that hard stuff around the, impl uh, or around the applications, uh, like SAP, uh, like Exchange, um, those are the ones that presented a lot of challenges. And that's what I think is so great about the VBlock uh, concept and uh, the technology is that that product's already been tested with Exchange, with SAP, and we're able to deploy it uh, you know, very quickly uh, and uh, get, a, uh, get, get the results that in a lot of cases our clients have spent you know, one, two, three years trying to achieve and still struggling to do it. Yeah, we're going to be at SAP Sapphire next week. Mm -hmm. And um, we were there last year. We had, we had a couple of customers on that were virtualizing SAP, but the big... The big thing there, it's different than the, the, what you get from Oracle, is SAP was totally behind it. It was a key part of their marketing strategy. You heard a lot of support there, and the CIOs told us that that's really important for them, mm -hmm. you know, to make sure that the ISV is behind it. Um, with this inevitability, hopefully more I, ISVs, I mean, most ISVs are. I think Oracle ultimately is, is quietly, sort of tacitly supporting it. Um, but what are some of the... The, the barriers, is it, is it the ROI? I mean, I mean uh, you're saying well, people, most people don't measure it. I mean, the ROI of virtualization is enormous, but that's infrastructure virtualization, mm -hmm. right? Now you're talking about the applications, That's right? right, and I think that the reason that the low-hanging fruit's been the easy one is because the, the, you, when you think about the applications that the CIOs are, are most concerned about, and nine times out of 10, they're next on the line around, is going to be around email, and it's going to be around their ERP implementations, right? So those are the ones that are uh, the most, um, risk intense, I guess, for lack of a better way of saying it. 
and uh, and I think that's why it's been slow to, uh, to, to, to to for I think it's been slow take up to get virtualization into those production environments. I mean now we're in a we're at, we're at a, a place I think where virtualization is pretty common uh, in most environments in one form or another. There's a lot more comfort today in virtualizing some of those mission critical applications than what there ever would have been. Again, you know, even 24 months ago, 36 months ago, and I, and you know, and and, and uh, to kind of bring it full circle, I think uh, you know, with uh, V Block technology, I think that that uh, one of the key selling points of it is the fact that you know, there's a, a a lot less complexity to it. It's a lot more turnkey, and it's already been tested. You know, it's interesting to hear you talk about specifically about V Block. I mean, I think of Accenture as a company that is technology agnostic, right? I mean, that's one of the value propositions that you bring to your client base, but. But you mentioned several times you're talking about VBlock. Obviously, there's some successes there. You're not the only service provider that's talking about VBlock. What's what's changed there? Why sort of the affinity to a particular technology where historically you wouldn't have had that necessarily? Yeah. Well, I mean, I think that the thing from an Accenture perspective is is that you know we uh, can certainly be agnostic, uh, but we are paid in many cases to have a point of view. Uh, and in certain instances, in certain situations, uh, you know, we believe that the V block is the right solution for our clients. Um, there's other solutions. There's other scenarios where uh, maybe it's not, you know, a complete V block technology. Maybe it's other technologies that come into play as well. Um, it just depends on what the business drivers are and what our clients are trying to achieve. I think from an Accenture perspective, uh, you know, being agnostic is, you know, certainly a selling point in certain uh, consulting engagements. But in other engagements, you know, this kind of goes back to the buying habits of our, of, uh, of uh, you know, our, our CIOs and the VPs that we deal with in the application and the infrastructure space, and even on the business side. You know, they want to buy solutions. They want to buy a business outcome. Uh, in some cases, they're less interested in, you know, a, a highfalutin uh, strategic kind of perspective as to, you know, the pros and cons. They just want something to buy that will work, that can, they can turn on, and they know it's going to be integrated, they know it's going to operate, and going to give them the results that they want. And in those situations, uh, you know, Accenture uh, will step up with a point of view. And in, in many cases, uh, VBlock is, uh, is uh, one of the products that we, uh, that we um have an affinity towards in, like I get it, in, in certain client situations. Well, I, I think, you know, there aren't a lot of choices. I mean, I've gone on record saying there's really a two-horse race here between EMC and HP as guys going after that sort of single logical block of infrastructure. Mm -hmm. I mean, IBM can do it. Um, certainly Oracle, if you want to buy the entire stack, and, you know, they've got their solutions. But mm -hmm. as a concept of bringing together compute and networking and storage, really those two companies and and, and, you know, the, the combination of VMware, Cisco, and EMC, obviously very powerful. So, um, but, it, but it was just sort of worth noting that, um, that that's, it's, there's been a lot of affinity toward, toward VBlock, block, and we know about the, the renowned uh, uh, pipeline and so forth. So I think that's a real change that we're seeing in the industry. And, uh, and I just think it has a lot of legs. You know, I don't think it's well, a flash in the pan. I think that's right. And, you know, the other thing that I would say is, is that, you know, if you've looked, if you look at all of the industry consolidation that's taken place over the last uh, uh, five, six years, uh, really longer than that, last decade, uh, to your point, there's a lot of kind of, it's really gotten and cutting a lot fewer as to where you're going to go in and be able to provide a turnkey capability. And I think to a certain extent, uh, that works fine. Uh, depending on again what uh, what situation you're walking into and what 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 business problem you're trying to solve, but in a lot of cases, and I would even go so far as to say in most cases, our clients are more interested in what the best of breed solutions are, and how do you knit those best of breed solutions together, uh, uh, it, as opposed to having to uh, uh, select a single vendor with. Uh, one key to turn and accept the fact that you've got a couple of best of breeds, you got a couple of middle of the roads, and you got a couple of emerging technologies that are all knitted together, uh, and, you're, and you're trying to make best out of it. Sometimes there's less risk in that, but in, in a lot of cases you get less quality. Maybe you get less ability to uh, uh, to uh, be able to dynamically uh, provision or to uh, you know change. Uh, you know, a, a, a specific architecture. If your company, or, or if you're from a business perspective, you want to move to it. You know, with agility to, you know, to meet a market demand. In a lot of cases, those turnkey solutions don't offer or afford you the ability to do that. Uh, so companies like ours and Accenture specifically, uh, you know, we like to look at what are the best of breed solutions. How do we, as an SI, knit those best of breed solutions together? And I think that's what drives us to you know, kind of select from an alliances perspective. Who are the vendors that we're going to place bets on? Uh, that uh, support what we're trying to do uh, for our clients. This is interesting. This concept of best of breed comes up a lot. And, um, 
you know, the best of breed is in the eye of the beholder. I'd be interested in, <laughs> from, a, from a company that I do consider technology agnostic, well, how do you evaluate best of breed, right? Because the, the startup is going to say, well, my technology is, my widget's better than EMC's. It's, yeah. it's new and it's, it's hot. It doesn't have all that you know, legacy infrastructure around it. But you know, financially, they might not be as strong or their service might not be as good or the ecosystem might not be as strong. So what are the dimensions of best of breed that you guys consider? Well, I think that, uh, to your point, right, uh, best of breed depends on the, si the given situation that you're, that you're trying to solve. There's no real kind of one uh, key, you know, fits all locks. But what I would say is that it, from our perspective, we look at uh, alliance relationships uh, in, you know, a short, medium, and a long-term kind of window. And you've got to weigh a lot of different factors to determine if something is, you know, use the industry definition of best of breed, right? Um, what's the scalability of it? How proven is it in the marketplace? Uh, how quick can you get ROI out of it? Um, uh, how well does it integrate with your legacy systems and the like? Um, uh, what is the footprint that's out there today? I mean, that's something that, you know, like it or not, you got to factor that in. Uh, and, uh, and so we look at it from those different angles. Uh, and then, you know, it's kind of a growing, you know, every six months, uh, my team's revisiting the technology that's out there, whether it be in the infrastructure space, the application space, or you know, productivity space, uh, to kind of sort through, you know, where do we want to place our bets? Uh, and, uh, and, 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 and what are some of those new disruptive technologies that are coming down the pike that we're going to kind of keep on our radar? Uh, and in some cases, you know, help to, you know, as an SI and being a big SI, you know, in a lot of cases, we've got the ability to help uh, some of those game-changing technologies really make an impact in the marketplace very quickly. Uh, and so, you know, we take that responsibility very seriously. And, um, and so, you know, like I said, you know, about every six months uh, to a year, we're kind of re re taking a step back, revisiting, and then trying to select, you know, who do we think uh, is the best uh, partners to, uh, to bring those technologies to, to the forefront. Because you don't want to have to refresh your portfolio every four months, right? It's just, it's just too can't. unproductive. From, you it's can't. just impossible. It's to get folks trained, you build delivery assets, uh, all of the quality material. I mean, there, there, a lot goes into uh, you know a delivery methodology that you know you just can't continue to switch products every three or four months because the new bell or whistles come out. So it's trying to balancing that with making sure that we don't get behind the you know as um, as our uh, chairman likes to say. You know, you kind of keep one foot in today and one foot in tomorrow, and that's that balance is what's uh, what's kind of difficult sometimes, but what we struggle to do. So strive anyway. So v, v Block is on your short list. Of, of best of breed, right? That's that's clear from the statements that you're making. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yeah. Um, and and um, so, and if a customer says, "Well, but I don't want this piece of V block. Can I have this piece?" You can't crack open the V block and put that piece in. So, you'll just integrate, you know, somebody else's solution in that case. Or how does that all work? Well, I mean, it just depends on the given situation, right? I mean, the 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 uh, for the most part, I mean, the V block is the Cisco VMware uh, EMC stack. Uh, um, there's other products that are out there today. Uh, there's other products that are emerging um, that are going to give uh, you know uh, flexibility to what that architecture uh, I think will be able to do and how it will be able to be implemented. But uh, in the short term, I mean, uh, from a V block perspective, uh, we look at EMC, Cisco, and VMware uh, as uh, you know kind of the the uh, the cornerstone of that technology. Well, you got to be impressed with the investment that EMC has made. Tucci talks about you know the. Let's see. I guess he said 24 billion over the last eight years in yeah. R&D and acquisitions. Yeah. That's a pretty big number, and 900 employees at VCE. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, clearly EMC has seen this opportunity of convergence mm -hmm. and said we're going for it. Mm -hmm. You know, we want to be a leader there. Um, like I said, I think personally right now it's a two-horse race. We'll see if others jump in, but uh, I think it's a multi-billion-dollar business that uh, these guys have hopped on and actually worked incredibly fast given the three company, the three headed monster, you know, um, throwing even Intel into the mix. It's, it's actually quite remarkable um, that they've been able to pull this off. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, we'll see where it goes from here, but I would, I would predict that, that EMC is gonna, gonna maintain the lead as long as it continues to invest and innovate there, which is, you know, good news for you guys and your customers. Yep, I think that's right. But, um, Okay, my last question for you is, um, as you look out, you know, you're seeing cloud, uh, you get this cloud big data intersection, you know, what's your, what's your telescope telling you? Uh, 
We're going to be here, let's say, let's keep it short. We're going to be here, let's say, next year, EMC, is EMC World 2012. What, what's it going to look like? I don't know. I've learned not to forecast the future. Uh, I always end up looking uh, kind of silly. Right, we would have thought big data would have been a theme here last year, right? Uh, yeah, but, I uh, mean, I definitely think that uh, 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 mobility is going to be, uh, you know, going to be top of mind for the next year or two, uh, um, if not further out. I mean, the ability just to, to move seamlessly uh, with one device uh, and walk into a room and another device have it and walk into a room and another device have it or walk into a different country and it have it. I mean, I think that that's going to be uh, kind of... Uh, uh, where the next kind of corporate initiative is going to be focused on is just getting into the mobility side of it after they get the data concerns and privacy concerns, security concerns kind of washed through. But that's just, that's one fellow's opinion. Well, I think you're right. I mean, the end user device is changing, changing everything, changing the dynamic, um, the way in which we interact with, yeah. with, with IT infrastructure. So, uh, excellent. Rocky Bonecutter, um, Accenture. Uh, appreciate you coming on theCUBE and uh, sharing with us your perspectives. <laughs> no worries, thank All you. Right.